What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum BV 790i X3D. And this actually really came as a surprise to me. Usually I hear about something like this a couple weeks before it's sent over, but uh, this actually just showed up and I'm super excited about it. If you're not familiar with the Menace Forum BD platform, basically what we've got here is an all-in-one mini ITX motherboard. So this does come with the CPU, obviously motherboard itself, and cooler all pre-installed ready to go. And in the past, I've done a few small form factor builds using their older boards, but none of them have had an X3D CPU. And what makes these kind of interesting, at least to me, is this is actually a mobile CPU in here, but it's in a desktop platform now. This is actually powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX3D and this can do a sustained TDP of 100 watts. We've also got a PCIe X16 slot here. It's actually a 5.0 slot. And inside of the box along with this unit, we've got our fan mount. It supports a 120 millimeter fan. It also has built-in Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, so we do have this larger antenna set up here. All the hardware we need to get everything mounted and the rear I.O. plate. One of the big reasons I'm a fan of these boards is just really ease of use. We've already got that cooler and CPU installed, but this is a bare bones unit, so you will need to add your own storage and RAM. I'm going to be going with 32 gigabytes of 5600 DDR5, and you might notice this is SODIMM RAM here. Not any different from their other BD platforms, but one of the downsides that I've seen with these boards here is we can only run this RAM up to 5200 megahertz. When it comes to storage, we've got a pretty beefy cooler up here. Dual M.2 SSDs, and I'm going to be going with a 2 terabyte Viper drive. The last thing I need to add here is a cooling fan, and I've tested a few here and there. My favorite to use with these boards is the Noctua NF-F12. It's more of a heavy-duty cooling fan, and it can get a bit louder if you bring that RPM on up, but I personally don't mind it, and it does a really good job cooling these systems down. So what we're getting here with that BD790i X3D is the Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D, 16 cores, 32 threads. It's got a base clock of 2.3 with a boost up to 5.4. In this system, it will run at a sustained 100 watt TDP. And since we've got an X3D chip here, our L3 cache is much higher than usual, coming in at 128 megabytes. I've got a full small form factor build planned for this board and it will be up on the channel soon, but to get the testing out of the way, I've just got it inside of what I consider my test rig for now. Just makes it a lot easier to swap out parts with that front panel and side panel off, but of course we needed to add a GPU and I wanted to go all AMD, so I added the all new Radeon RX 9070 XT. I was really interested to see how this would perform with the 9070 attached. And uh, when it comes to a small form factor build, again, I do have something planned, waiting on a couple parts to come in, but that will be posted soon. So first things first, wanted to take a look at the BIOS here. We've got Minisform's visual BIOS. From setup, uh, if we go to advance here, we can see from CPU configuration, PSS support, NX mode, heading back a little bit, hardware monitor, we can adjust the fans on this unit if we need to. I'm gonna leave them stock right now. Uh, AMD PBS, we can adjust that PCIe slot. Uh, GFX lane speed, go up to Gen 5 here with this. I'm gonna leave it at auto. And from AMD CBS, actually I haven't found a way to adjust the TDP but we've got that CPPC dynamic preferred cores, frequency, cache, driver, auto. Uh, for this setup here, I'm gonna go with auto. We can also change that TJ Maxx if we want to. But overall, I mean, we've got most of the settings that we need for a little mini ITX board like this. And uh, again, there's not much that I'm gonna adjust right now, maybe in another video when we do a full build with this. But for now, we're gonna leave it right where it is and we'll get right into Windows. So far, so good. Everything's been working out really well with this. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D, 16 cores, 32 threads. When it comes to our memory, this will only go up to 5200. I've put 56 in here, but this is kind of the case with these little mini ITXs from Minus Forum. We've got access to the built-in 610M Radeon iGPU, but we're gonna be testing with the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT. Got 16 gigs of VRAM here, and we should see some pretty good performance out of this machine. Next thing I wanted to take a look at here was real-world TDP with this chip. And yeah, I mean, we're right there at 100 watts. 
Again, I did see this boost up to 120 in some cases, but for the most part, we're right there stable at a 100 watt TDP. And yeah, I mean, performance here is actually really good. Now I want to move over to some benchmarks and give you a look at that. First up, we've got Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 2,801, multi 16,043. And just to kind of give you an idea, the Ryzen 9800X 3D, which is in my opinion, one of the best chips on the market right now for gaming, Comes in with around a 3300 single, 18,000 multi. But the big thing to keep in mind here is the 7945HX 3D is a mobile chip. Next up, we've got Cinebench R24. And on single core, we're right there at 112. So it is beating out that Apple M1. Moving over to multi-core, you can see we're at 1,778. And right below it is the 7940HX. It's not the 45. That one's coming in at 1,750. So yeah, I mean, we've got a nice little hike here on single and multi with this X3D chip. And the final test I ran here was really interesting. This is Time Spy, and of course, a lot of this score is attributed to the GPU. But if you take a look at the top there, we've got that RX 9070 with the Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D. We got a total score of 24,354. And right below it was a system I recently built using the same GPU, but using the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. And that one's coming in at 23,613. A little bit of a higher graphic score with the 9800X 3D, but a much lower CPU score, which is really odd here. Either way, 24,000 with this mobile chip paired up with the 9070 is really impressive. But now I want to see how this thing handles AAA gaming. And the first one we've got here is Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p ultra preset. And yeah, I mean, it's hanging right with this 9070 XT. Not bad at all. And with the preset, it does take FSR to quality. I could turn this off and we'd see an average of around 78. So it'd be full 1440p. But the 7945HX 3D is really holding in there. Next up, we've got Spider-Man 2, 1440p, no FSR, very high settings, and we're also not using ray tracing here. And if you take a look at Afterburner, at the very bottom, we've got the TDP listed. On average, through all of the games that I tested, we're at around 89 watts with this unit here. And temperatures actually aren't as bad as I thought they would be, given that we're at that higher wattage on a mobile chip. But Menace Forum does a pretty decent job with their cooling system. And if I didn't mind this thing being a little louder, I mean, we could definitely take those temps down by adjusting the fan curve. But right now it's working great. Here's Starfield, 1440p, ultra settings. And what I've noticed here is the 7945HX 3D does give us around a 5.2 gigahertz clock throughout with most of the stuff that I've tested. And it will boost up the 5 5.4 every once in a while when it's needed. Hello. And the final one we have here is Monster Hunter Wilds, 1440p ultra preset. So FSR is set to quality, but we're not using any kind of frame gen here with that 9070 paired up with that 7945X3D. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU clocks, TDP, and temperatures that I've seen from this board so far. And remember, we've actually got this paired up with that Noctua NF-F12. It's an industrial cooling fan. Does get a bit louder than others, and depending on what fan you add here, I mean, you might see lower temperatures at that stock fan curve. That's exactly what we're using right now. As for maximum clocks, this thing did reach 5.436 gigahertz. Average TDP while gaming at 1440p was around 93 watts. The maximum recorded TDP was 123 watts. Average temperatures, 1440p gaming, around 74 with the fan setup I have here, but this is not enclosed. As you saw, it's kind of an open air case that I've got. So to reach these same temperatures inside of a closed case, we may need to mess with that fan curve. But the maximum recorded was only 86 degrees Celsius. And yeah, that does seem hot. But you got to keep in mind, this is a mobile CPU. I mean, these do run a bit hotter than desktop units anyway.
So far, when it comes to the new Menace Forum BD790X3D, I'm actually really liking this little board here. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning, I do like using these because they're just really easy to put in small form factor units. And even if you wanted to go with a small form factor quiet unit, you could take the TDP down on this to around 65 watts and still get some really good 1440p gaming, depending on what GPU you've got it paired up with. But that way it didn't pull so much wattage and it would stay nice and quiet. But yeah, I do like what they've done here. And if you're interested in learning a little more about this board, I'll leave links to their official website in the description below. But keep an eye out on the channel because we've got a small form factor build coming up. If there's a certain GPU you'd like to see paired up with this in that build, let me know in the comments below. Unfortunately, when it comes to small, small form factor, I can't go with the 9070 right now due to the size of the cards that are on the market, the ones I have in my possession. So if there's something else you'd like to see, just let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.